All right. So what I've done here, I've uh, acquired the uh, Mac OS 10.5 uh, installation DMG file, and um, what I've done is uh, in this utility. First thing you got to do is uh, find your freaking cursor. It images, it's scan image for restore, it's going to show a file browser. Uh, point the file browser to your uh, OS 10.5 uh, partition. That's the first thing. Then it's going to parse out the entire OS 10.5.dmg uh, DMG file. It's a very large file, it's about 7, seven gigabytes. So it's going to take a while to parse out on the hard drive, on the laptop hard drive. Then what you want to do is uh, grab yourself your iPod. In this case, Mr. Data right here, as I like to call it, hook it up via USB into your MacBook, and then you gotta go inside the partition pane, uh, go down to options, and one of the options is gonna be um, like PowerPC or Apple GUID partition map. Use the GUID because you want to boot up from this drive hit partition and it'll wipe out all, all the data in the iPod okay so that prepares the iPod now this this little bit's taking a really long time because it's got a parse about seven gigabytes of a disk image and once that's done I'll show you uh, what happens next alright so now the uh, verification of the disk image has been completed and successfully uh, Right there, scanning the VOS 10.5 DMG completed successfully. So I'm going to hit OK now. Alright, I can't afford to mess this up because this is a long pain in the ass process. Let's see. Come back down. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the Restore tab. And then from there, I'm going to. Uh, drag a disk from which to restore so basically I want to restore from this guy right here so I'm so it's successfully parsed out so I'm going to drag this guy over to this right here hit OK drag a disk here to restore onto it so what it's going to do is it's going to copy the contents of this DMG file onto my iPod so I which is the data. Should be set up. It should be ready to boot for Intel. It accepted that. Skip the checksum, erase destination. It's a clean format. I don't need to do that. Everything set up properly. I have 30 gigs on my iPod. Formatted as Mac OS 10 extended. I can do it. So now it's going to dump 7 gigs of data. Restoring will copy new data to Mr. Data. Do you want to continue? Yes. So now what it's doing is uh, basically it's going to dump the 7 gigabyte uh, Mac OS 10.5 restore DMG file onto Mr. Data. And there's the copying process. After this is done, um, I should be able to just quit this utility, go up into system preferences and choose my startup disk because I'm going to start it from the iPod. So basically I'm just going to boot from this as a disk image via USB and install it into my MacBook. I'll get into that in a little bit later. Alright, so the copying process is more or less complete. Just give it a few more seconds to clean up. Okay, it's done now. Now let's see what happens. I'm going to keep this utility open because I don't want to lose all my work. I'm going to save pre system prefs. Okay. So we copy the uh, the contents of the uh, 10.5 DMG file onto my iPod. Let's see if it shows up as a startup disk now. And there we have it. We have two operating systems to choose from. You can start up from either 10.4.10 .10 on Tiger or 10.5 on Mr. Data, which is off my iPod. So it seems like everything worked in terms of that. 
I'm going to swap out the hard drive in my uh, production machine. Uh, and I'm going to switch over to my Seagate 60 gig stock drive that came with it. And install Leopard on that. See what happens. And I'll be back. Alright, so I swapped the hard drive from my production system onto the stock drive that came with my MacBook. And right now, it just has the default installation of Mac OS 10.4.10. On my desktop, I have Mr. Data, which is the iPod connected via USB. And it's pretty basic right now. So what I'm going to do is come up here, go to my system preferences, go down to my startup drive, and it's remained intact across the disk utility into the disk image. So there we go. I click on Mac OS 10.5 on Mr. Data, do a restart, restart. Alright, and let's see what happens. So, verbal mode. It's set to USB. It should start booting off of my Mac. Apple logo. Hard drive is relatively quiet right now. And right now I'm booting off of the iPod. 30 gig 5G iPod. So the Leopard installed disk images on the iPod going through the USB cable. And with any luck in a couple of minutes I'm probably going to get an install screen. We'll see what happens. Alright, so this is the Leopard OS 10 install screen. That's Starfield behind it. Coming off of my iPod right there. That's firmware code displaying the error messages. This is the main install screen. Hit OK. This is going to be slower than normal because it is going through a iPod hard drive, 4200 RPM, 30 gigabyte. So this is probably going to take a little bit longer than expected, but that's that. Welcome to the installer. You continue. Standard EULA. My destination. Mac OS 10 hard drive. Uh, default install requires 7 gigabytes of space. Okay, so to begin installing, click install. I normally like to customize, so I'm going to customize this installation. And uh, let's see. Generally, I don't need print drivers. Didn't yeah, keep that. My translations I don't need. If anyone's interested, these are the uh, installation packages and sizes. The essential system software is 3.4 gigs. Fonts is like 11 megs. Translations is 2 gigabytes and X11 is 3.5 megabytes in this version. So I'm done customi customizing. Okay. And here goes nothing. See how the damn Apple menu looks. Yep. It's all good.